The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Board money car. Why well, a car is so small? We can't fit. We can't fit more than like three people in a car. There's a trolley pulling into the station. It's made of money. How about this? I like this. I like this analogy better. Ticket, please, because you've been riding our comedy train for three fucking years. <laughs> and and if you don't hand me that ticket, we're gonna throw you off. We'll ban your IP. Hey, it's me, the Piper. What's up? Hey, Piper's here. Pipe. It's me, Piper Parabo. Time to pay for your favorite comedy podcast. Thanks, Billy Piper. Sincerely, <laughs> celebrity endorser Billy Piper. This is Billy Mays. Brother. Billy Mays here for a new product that you've been, <laughs> that you've been using for three years. I'm come back. I'm come back from the dead. I'm, I'm a spectral form now to tell you you've been listening to this podcast for three years. Time to chunk up the change. Is that it? Uh, yep. Time to chunk up the change with my brother, my brother, and me. Special pledge drive uh, podcast. It's time to pay the piper. We got a big show for you today. We bet. Uh, as we record it, I'm sure its size will be revealed to us. It uh-huh. seems like it will be big. Do you guys want to say anything on the podcast? Or I, nope. I just, th- guys, thank you so much for your support. Because um, I'm assuming that you heard on Twitter that it was Max Fun Drive time, and you immediately clicked the link, and you immediately just dropped. You just immediately junked us right there, mm-hmm. right there on the spot. You plonked it down, a big one. And I and I also appreciate you. I assume. Choosing MBMBAM as your favorite podcast oh, on so the important. website, mm-hmm. OBS, and um, then tweeting about it and telling all your friends uh, that they I should mean, be ashamed of themselves for not doing the same. We just we just jumped right into it. Look, the Max Fun Drive. If you are a new listener, this is our third go round with the yeah. drive with yeah. the pleasure. It's a two week long e e event um, that that our parent you, company. You could Max just Fun say Fun. event. E event. That yep. our parent company sets up uh, is a fundraiser. You can help support us and, and other amazing shows on the Max Fun Network. We do extra super length episodes. We have bonus content. We have pledge gifts. We're going to get to all that and more, but it's a special time. It's a special time to be part of the Max Fun family. That boy, Griffin, you said a mouthful. Um, and this year is like none other. We've got a ton of great pledge gifts to tell you about, but there's going to be time for all that. First, let's just get into the advice. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. I'm your sweet baby, Griffin McElroy. To first, this week's show, I'm going to say all the syllables wrong. <laughs> <laughs> let's get the first cuyo <laughs> <laughs> I'm 26. I have a degree in animation, but I decided a year ago that it just wasn't what I wanted to do. I've begun a track for computer science programming, but thoughts of my never- ever nearing death have had me thinking of other ways to spend the remaining days on this sweet earth. I've always wanted to be a pilot, specifically flying helicopters, but training is expensive and the career path takes quite some time to move up. Should I go even further into debt to chase my dream or should I follow the money and spend the rest of my days in a cubicle? That's from feeling shackled in Chicago. I I am in no way being flippant. What jobs are there for a helicopter pilot? Yeah. Okay. There's hospital guy. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. That's uh. You could work for a, like park rangers for like when fucking idiot Aaron Ralston's out there get pinned. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh. You could go with uh. News There's chop- like new, news, news chopper. chopper that's really guy. a thing, right? News chopper guy is one. Uh. Another one is uh. Oh, army man. Army guy. Army man. Army man. Army, army man. Tourist um, guy. Oh yeah, tourist guy. Like that the would probably guy. be the sweetest. Like most lending itself to a USA action drama mm-hmm. or oh, action that? comedy drama in the vein of Psych or Burn Notice. Kevin Costner, both of those, by the way, just got picked up by the Esquire Network. Pretty cool network you got going on there, Esquire. <laughs> um, yeah, what was that fucking movie with Ash Ash Khan, Ash Kutcher? It, it, sorry, it was Ash Kutch. 
and it Ash had Kutch. Kevin Costner, and they were people in helicopter, and then people would be drowning in the ocean, and they would get him. Ten cup. Uh, it was dive buddies. Dive, dive buddies. buddies with Ash Ashton Kutcher. Um, you could be one of him. So yeah, it doesn't seem like there are a lot of career ops. It seems like like a lot of people would want to do that. It seems like one of those jobs that maybe you don't get paid basically anything because everyone's like, yeah, you get to be in a helicopter all day. Uh-huh. That's life's greatest reward. Much. Oh fucking, you can be. Man, I bet you Bachelor employs so many people. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. What if you started your own like limousine style helicopter business? That's probably not legal, is it? I will yeah. take you to prom, the helicopter business. <laughs> Does your high school have a landing pad? No? <laughs> Fuck it. We'll improvise. How are you how are you at Halos? How are you at high altitude landing operations? <laughs> Have I got some high altitude have... opportunities for you? <laughs> if you don't capitalize on these opportunities, you are going to have <laughs> unbroken legs. <laughs> I think that you should, as far as your actual question, I can't, I mean. It's, we usually no. say, like, follow your bliss, but. It sounds like you're doing that too much. <laughs> Maybe yeah. you need to pick something that's your bliss and just chase that. This bliss sounds fucking dope, though. It Here's, so is, it, is it something you could do like like uh, pilot lessons where you could like be an amateur helicopter pilot, but maybe that's not like your career path, but like you have a license to do it. You could do it if you wanted to, but it's not your day job. Is that crazy? Is that a thing you think you, you're talking about recreate? It's not like fucking like pottery. It's not like you build an attachment. No, in your but garage. you can do that. You can do that as a pilot. You can go to like a small airport and like get your pilot's license. Even if you're not, like, a commercial airline pilot. Hold on. Hold on. That's something you can do? Yeah. Hey. Well, uh, guys, I've had fun doing this podcast, but my, I just got a new hobby. <laughs> Peace. I got a hobby in, this, in the fucking clouds now. Uh-huh. Well, so you're saying he should be a computer scientist who, as a hobby, helicopters. Yeah. I think that could eat up a lot of his... Oh, like, it's not cheap. Yeah. You gotta you gotta feed and house the helicopter, which is already expensive. And you never own your own helicopter, right? <laughs> no, you gotta lease it. Yeah, if you don't take good care of your helicopter, the helicopter social services will come by mm-hmm. and be like, "Oh, come here, little buddy. What did he do to you? That's what a- have they been feeding you?" I've seen helicopter cops, Houston, and it is some messed up shit uh, down there. I was thinking of cattle. <laughs> I got helicopters confused with cattle again. It sounds like helicopter pilot sounds like fun. But it doesn't really sound like a career that you want to do. It sounds like you just want to kind of fly helicopters, mm-hmm. which is also fine. But I don't think that you should bail on the. I, I don't. I, you don't have to make it your career. You can just <gasps> be a guy that also flies helicopters. I have it an idea. Like a safer plot. What if you were a dude who did the computer science and programming for helicopters? Okay. Okay. Well, what if you worked? What like what if you worked for an aerospace company? That made helicopters. Holy shit. You program the artificial intelligence of the Airwolf helicopter. I Knight Rider Air- 2. Knight Rider. Sky Rider. Cloud Rider. Sky Rider. Cloud oh, there it is. It's called. It's my new show. It's called Airwolf 2. Knight Rider colon Sky Rider. <laughs> Comma. Col- Cloud Rider. And it stars a Ghost guy Rider. Who's, who's, who's a computer scientist that programs an AI for a helicopter and it also makes a cartoon. About the helicopter that he draws. And he's a billionaire. He's a billionaire. And also, he has sex with all kinds of people all the time. So look out for, like, keep it locked to UPN. Keep it on the Esquire channel. (laughs) Can we we put some tits on that helicopter? (laughs) Done. Done. I got another question for you guys. I'm taking, talking, fuck. I'm talking to my friend who is a lady, and she came to me feeling bummed out. I tried to cheer her up just by being positive and making her laugh. And although she did laugh, she seemed slightly annoyed for a second. Is there a certain chemistry between people who are feeling depressed and those who are trying to cheer them up that creates bad tension? Or could I be experiencing a taste of schadenfreude? This is from I Gmail. Schadenfreude. Man, I long for a lifestyle where I can think this much about what other people feel. This seems I'm, like you're really a considerate person, and I wish I had that inclination. I, you're saying you fucking witnessed a micro-expression on this person's face. You need to get in the police interrogation biz. Like, yeah, he smiled, but his eyes, for a millisecond, were so angry, and that's how I knew he was lying about the treasure. Hey, guys, side note, because it just occurred to me. 
Do you think in countries like England where bum, you know, they say bum for butt, the word bummed out means something like completely different? Oh, my God. Really dirty. It means you hump their butt so hard that the inside of their butt comes to be the outside of their butt. She was really bummed out. She was you know really, what I mean? She was bummed out so hard that she died. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you make it tragic? She died from bum loss. It was it was awful. Listen, guys, time loss is bum loss. Exactly. <laughs> I uh, I think here's one that I had to learn the hard way. Sometimes when your friend or or significant other comes to you and is upset or depressed or angry. Sometimes they don't want to be cheered up. I know exactly Sometimes what you're saying. Sometimes they just want you to say that it is, in fact, shitty what is going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sometimes they just want to vent. Sometimes they just want to know that what they did was right. Because, like, when you're trying to cheer them up and be like, hey, man, it's going to be okay. They're like, yeah, I know it's going to fucking be okay. I'm an adult who knows the situation. I'm just saying it sucked at this the, time. The idea, though, for us, specifically for the three of us and our fam and growing up, coming up, McElroy, coming up, mm-hmm. McElroy's the new name of the podcast. Coming to Esquire Channel. <laughs> coming up, McElroy. Three zany bros. Um, the idea of something being not a laughing matter was, yep. like, incomprehensible. So, like, I still have no... I still... Obviously, if somebody's like, yeah, uh, basically, my whole family just died. Like, I wouldn't be like, oh, well... Time to Batman. No, Sometimes that is actually Batman. a fear in my life, though, that I'll make a joke like that, and just everyone in the room will slowly turn to me horrified and be like, why would you say that? Our podcast mm-hmm. is just an hour of that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm really bad at that. When, like, somebody is, like, really pissed off about something, and I'd be like, yeah, well, at least here's a joke about Ryan Lochte, and then they'll be like, this isn't... This isn't that that I wanted. I wanted something different. I find it best that when someone comes to me bummed out just to, like, listen and say, like, yeah, man, I know, rather than try to be like, grass is always greener, sun shines tomorrow, there, there's always another day, silver lining, because but, that, that shit can get annoying unless it's, you know, unless you get the feeling that that's what they're looking for. But don't just assume that. But that should you, if that's your natural inclination, though. Oh, if you're like Mr. That's, sunshine? No, that's my question is, like, it is my natural inclination to try to cheer somebody up if they're upset. I mean, that it, it is just my natural impulse. Mm-hmm. Is it right that I should subvert that because it's what the other person wants? I mean, it's is case that, by case, isn't it? It's case by case. I don't. I don't think you can say it's 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 standard and uniform. Let's ro- I, I let's would... let's role play. Let's role play, and you guys can come at it a different way. So I'll be somebody who's depressed, and you guys you guys come at me and see just how you handle the situation. All right, Travis, you'll be. The comforting uh, 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 empathizer. Okay. And I'll be like, chuckles. Okay. okay. Man. Ugh. Mm, my man. It's, you know, they just, Burn Notice got picked up by Esquire. I'm worried that they're going to change the plot and just like everything, everything fucking sucks today. Yeah, man, I hear you. Whew. Right, like so that, that's the, the char- that's it. That's all you. Have? That's the what fucking laziest. What, what do you want? Be like, yeah, I know. I hear they also picked up Psych. Am I right? They're gonna yeah. ruin it. I hear they're getting rid of Delay. They wouldn't dare. That would be the biggest mistake. I know. Right, and now it's cheered up because we're talking about Delay. Everybody's mm-hmm. happy. God, you know the ways to um, I know the happiness right. cortex. Uh, all right, now it's my turn. Okay. All right, go ahead, Griffin. You want the setup again? Uh, <laughs> please. Do you want the same one, or do you want me to? talk about another problem in my life because right now that's really the most pressing thing i have uh same one same one okay okay yeah i don't know it's just you know i used to just i knew which channel burn notice was on it was on usa yeah tnt i used to just turn it on channel 32 usa that's where usa lives on my tv i would turn it on and just let it fucking cruise because i knew where the plot was going knew where the characters were going now who knows boy griffin whenever i feel the way you're feeling you know who i'd turn to my puppet friend Walter. Hey, thanks for having, thanks for getting me on the box. Wait, you're just Jeff? doing Jeff Dunham. Hey, I think you're doing a Jeff Dunham thing. You I think he's me, whippersnapper. I think he's actually doing uh, the Beaver, the Mel Gibson movie, The Beaver, which started a <laughs> Beaver puppet named Walter. You're doing hey, Jeff Beaver. It's me, Jose Jalapeno on a stick. No, it's definitely, oh, no. It's it's definitely right. a Dunham. Hold on, now I'm let racist. there be no, let there be no doubt about it. He has gone full Dunham. <laughs> We have a, I'm sorry, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Justin has gone full Dunham. There is only one punishment for me. You guys got me. Uh, it's 
It's Ahmed the dead terrorist. Silence, oh, I kill you. Fucking flip the kill switch. <laughs> flip I kill it. you. I kill your switch. Protocol, per, protocol black. <laughs> Sexy Garfield is compromised. Sexy, Sexy Garfield is Garf- compromised. compromised. Flood it. Flood the station. <laughs> Guys, my office is filling with water. Blow it. Blow the diodes. Release the biotoxin. We're done. <laughs> my diodes just blew in my office. What are you guys doing? <laughs> The only way to kill Justin is to poison him with the biotoxin while he's drowning and being electrocuted. Once he gets going on that Dunham tear, he becomes like the fucking juggernaut. You know who's like the fucking juggernaut? My friend Bubba J. Oh, Oh, God. Why do you know so many Jeff Dunham puppets? Because I'm on Wikipedia, you dumb fuck. (laughs) (laughs) Who's the dumb fuck now? Google knows what's up with you and your Jeff Dunham lust. Have I talked about the... I as soon as I moved to Austin and I was like meeting people and I was meeting people who knew like my friends and it, it's that weird time and you don't know like whether this person is going to become a close friend of yours or just an acquaintance that you're going to meet exactly once how I was meeting those people and for some reason I started using whether or not they like Jeff Dunham as a metric and there is a horrifying horrifying amount of people who fucking swear by that dude's brand of comedy it, it, and it's the people you least expect because I'd be like hanging out with somebody like you're really cool I think you're gonna be one of my new friends in this hometown and then I would make a Jeff Dunham joke and they'd be like I don't understand I don't get why you're I don't understand why you're making fun of Jeff Dunham because like his shit's so on point Travis I'm sorry are you a bigger Jeff Dunham fan than I knew or are you like completely ignorant about the work of Jeff Dunham huh <laughs> okay you know he was on Ellen. He he was also on Thirty Rock, which makes me think that maybe this dude, maybe 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 he's one of those guys that has like worked up this whole persona, but in real life is like God. I know that this is like the stupidest shit, but mm-hmm. for some reason they love it. Like Larry the Cable Guy, you mean? Yeah, exactly like Larry the Cable Guy. Yeah. When in behind the scenes, he's like, please call me Lawrence. Please. please My name is Lawrence Cable Doctor. I went to Cable University for seven years to get my doctorate in cabling. I can't believe I've sunk to such a level. I got that program finished. Like, got her done is, like, his thing. <laughs> sure. I'll, do it. I'll allow it. I recently found out the men I work with make more money than I do. I'm a lady working as a carpenter. Cabinet maker, really. In a small, old-fashioned town where the chance of getting hired anywhere else is not likely. I'm really mad, but I'm not sure what to do about it. Can you help? That's from Equality Challenge on the East Coast. Well, you've come to the right place. You've come to just the right place. As white men, we... uh, (laughs) Ah, damn it. Can you carve secret messages in the cabinets? Like what? Like when people buy the cabinet inside, it it says, like, made by an underpaid woman. Yeah. (gasps) Oh, that's way better than where I thought you were going with it. I thought you meant, like, magic spells to make it, like, Indian in the cupboard. Uh, oh okay. My God. Wait. Gr- Holy shit. Wait a minute. Travis, are you saying that you think she should carve incantations into the cabinets? Listen, all I'm saying is that the Indian in the cupboard cupboard had to come from somewhere, right? Okay. It didn't so it's like appear magically in the little boy's bedroom. This is great. You put Monopoly money in there, close it, and then all of uh-huh. a sudden you've that's like you've you've re- you you create a toy version of the Lily Ledbetter Act, and you put it in mm-hmm. there, and then it's 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 been ratified into law. Have you thought about asking for more money? But that's horseshit. She shouldn't have to. Why don't you put your mm. fucking boss in the cupboard, turn him into a toy? You'd probably, it's probably a small <laughs> cupboard, though. You probably have to fucking kill him. You know, I'm so embarrassed now, you guys, because I've just remembered that in India in the cupboard, it's not the cupboard at all. It's the key, because at one point he uses it on a chest, and that's how he goes to visit a uh, little bear. I'm so uh, embarrassed, right. you guys. Oh, uh, yeah, this is humiliating. We'll probably have to delete this question from the show, because people are listening. Uh-huh. Like, it's the key, you dumb fucks. All the people on my Indian in the Covered forums are just like, oh, my God, I can't believe Keymaster73 just said that. Uh. I can't believe it. He's got Key in his username. And his, <laughs> Why didn't he his, know about it? His avatar is a key. I think talking to your boss is probably a good first option, uh, at least opening that discussion thread. So May so I suggest something score. much more passive aggressive? Of course. Thank you. So say you're getting paid 77 cents on the dollar, right? You mm. should start doing 77% of the normal work of everyone else. Or make and all so your the, cabinet parts 77% smaller than right? spec than spec requires, than the blueprint has demanded. <laughs> and, and then, then the boss like, comes to you and he's like, hey, what the hell? He'd be like, oh, this is all I'm getting paid for. Oh, sorry. You only paid me to put saloon doors on this cabinet. Sorry. Sorry. 
Yeah, I know it's supposed to be for, for private unmentionables, but now people are going to be able to see the tops and the I know that this was your unmentionables cabinet. <laughs> I'm, a sm- I'm a carpenter who works at an independent unmentionables cabinet agency. <laughs> we, build a- we build cabinets to spec. It's a small I'm- town with small unmentionables ideals. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and now my doors are going to be even smaller because fuck these pigs. Why don't you carve that in your fucking cat? Fuck these pigs. I hope you enjoy your cabinet. It was made by, I- it was made by hate pigs. Are you all? Are you maybe the youngest? Are you the most not not even like physically the youngest, but the most junior member of the staff? Is that possible, or is that just me like wishing the glass ceiling wasn't there? I yeah. actually know from other details from a longer email that she sent that she is not. That there have been men that have been hired since her. Well, that's cool. dog shit. Well, that's Isn't dog that? shit. Tell us who they are, and we'll tell everybody not to buy their fucking misogynist cabinets or start carving. Like, a, you need to come up with some branding and carve mm-hmm. that into the cabinet. And then we say only buy cabinets that have that have e- Equality Challenge on the East Coast brand on it. Or that, start your own cabinet company with mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. Fabinets. Fabinets? Yes. Equal... Equalblinets. Equalblin... Equalblin... Equalblinets. Equalblinets. Furniture. <laughs> Oh my god, that's pretty good, right? Hernature? Yeah, yeah. So we'll start that company and fuck those guys. Furniture ca- cabinets. If you don't buy a furniture cabinet, you're putting your clothes in the garbage. The good news is I watch Shark Tank. Like one person can start a revolution. Mm-hmm. You c- you've got to go and tell this story to all the sharks, and they'll be like, "I'm gonna gobble this up. You hook you hooked me, um, and you'll can have say, a million dollars." Can I say something though? To please, I do not think they bite. I do not think they'd bite for furniture fabnets. Why? <laughs> it just doesn't seem particularly lucrative. You're charging a premium. You're charging a premium for uh, for an ideal, and that is. Uh, I'm just saying, Mark Cuban is not gonna fucking, not gonna bite that bait. It, it will if you get his kids involved. Mark Cuban will always invest okay. if you if the product involves his kids. I saw him give a woman. Uh, an 18 year old girl, uh, an 18 year old girl, five, well, I guess 18 year old woman, technically, mm-hmm. adult woman, uh, $500,000 for her eczema skin product line because his kids have eczema. That's it. That's it. You, you make cracked the code. Your toy fabnets. Mm hmm. What, what do your kids got? They Where are your kids going to put their fucking eczema medicine, Mark? <laughs> They're going to put them in a furniture fabnet. It's got a little picture of eczema on it so the kids know what. What is stored in this particular unit? And they got fun characters like Lawrence the Cable Gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> Lawrence, Lawrence the Scaly Cable Gentleman. He applies, he's in this caricature, he's applying a salve. He's applying a salve to his rotten, rotten flesh. Speaking of balms and salves necessary to keep your, uh, keep your ship right, it's Max Fun Drive time. And uh, we couldn't be more excited to, to present I guess this, uh, this, this, the donation rewards this year because they are fantastic. Let's talk though first about where your money is actually going, Ditto. Uh, it's going to, it's going to the Maximum Fund Network to expand the network and bring on new shows, which I don't know if you've been paying attention. You really didn't have to be this year to notice all the fucking shows that have been added to the Max Fund Network. It's been like out of control rapid expansion. We got One Bad Mother. We got Risk was this year, I think. Yeah, um, Memory Palace was this year. Memory Palace was this year. Uh, Throwing Shade wasn't this year, was it? I don't think so. I feel, I feel like it's been more than a year. Um, With Dave Hill. Dave Hill's podcasting incident is this year. Uh, uh, Wham Bam Pow, our new podcast that I don't even think we've talked about. No, with our good haven't. friends Cameron Esposito and uh, and uh, Rhea Butcher and, and Ricky Carmona. I don't know if you guys listen to other shows other than ours. It may be presumptive to even suggest that you don't. Um, but, like, seriously, it's it's an amazing network of, of comedy that really is not reproduced anywhere else. Um, and it's not mm-hmm. just us. It's, it's you guys, too. Like, the Maximum Fun community. I, I feel like I've been stressing this a lot lately. But it's it's this unique, perfect community of, like, no dicks. Um, mm-hmm. So, like, that I think is special and that is worth supporting. So, uh, I, it, whenever you donate, it helps us make more money from from doing the show and spend more time on the podcast um and 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 do more stuff we bought new mics uh i think you'll notice after we joined the 
quality of our podcast got much, much better. And not only that, like if you're looking to donate, there are so many different levels and you'll find one that fits your, your budget, something you can handle for the year. It's, a, you know, it's separated donation by month. It starts from $5 a month all the way up to $200 a month. There's going to be a level that works for you. And all of those levels contain gifts. Uh, to thank you for, for helping out with the network. You yeah. want to give $10, you're going to be a friend of the family. That means you're going to get some awesome uh, Max Fun earbuds or uh, earbuds with the distinctive Max Fun logo on the the ear part that goes into your ear, uh, and you're also gonna now get... which part is because sometimes I plug like the audio jack in there. That's where the sound hole goes, um, mm-hmm. like the holes in your face where sound goes into. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, so that's uh, that's at the ten dollar a month level, um, and you're also gonna get at any donation level, you're gonna get some really cool. Uh, exclusive uh, bonus material. Uh, we record a special episode uh, of of uh, of our program, and there's a whole wealth of f- f- prior year bonus material mm-hmm. in there that you can get in and and including enjoy. an episode we recorded with our daddy, mm-hmm. and including some video of one of our live shows. So check oh, that's that out. right. Yeah, it there's a lot of a lot of digi content, not just for us, but for all of the all the Maximum Fun shows. Um, if you are feeling a little bit more supportive, is that the and Randy and Randy, uh, there's a twenty dollar month uh, uh, group you can go with the Diamond Friendship Circle. You get the bonus episode, you get the earbuds, you also get this is the fucking dopest, the Intimate Sensations Pack, an erotic fucking survival kit, F- fucking survival kit from uh-huh. Extreme from Extreme Restraints, which includes a pocket-sized vulva feel turbo massager it massages it whatever you want it to massage maybe you've got a sore back maybe you've got a hard balls <laughs> maybe you got the hardest balls it's got attachments so like i don't even know what the attachments are but it, i'm sure there's one for your back and one for your balls uh there is also and this is the best rocket lube which is a high quality water-based <laughs> maximum fun branded lubricant for your parts. For your down there. For your parts or for other parts? For other I, people's parts? Have you ever shoved it in and it you used a lube that was average fun? That's <laughs> it's not it's just not cutting it. Doesn't cut the mustard. Have you ever used mustard? <laughs> that's <laughs> ab- that's mustard. absolutely ineffective. That, that is, is not even an option. That is negative fun lube. We're talking about maximum fun lube. It, there's also a black satin ma- mask. In case you don't want to see somebody putting mustard on your on your balls and hitting you with a massager, uh, thank you, Darks, our friends at ExtremeStrengths dot com for that. Uh, you also get a Max Fun Rocket Tee if you want to let people know what kind of lube you use. Sure, absolutely, and uh, and for thirty five bucks, you're going to be in Judge John Hodgman's Justice Squad, uh, which is going to net you two really sharp looking uh, Maximum Fun uh, shot glasses. They're, they're actually rocks glasses. they're rocks glasses. They're like oh, uh, they're rocks glasses. I'm sorry, I couldn't tell from the from the scale. What's the? And they're engraved with the Max Fun rocket. Uh, they're, they are they're beautiful. They're fucking classy. I'm trying to think of what the. It's not a highball glass. What it's is a it? Tumbler glass, isn't it? Yeah, it's thick. It's got a thick bottom on it. This mm-hmm. is a this is a glass that you put ice in and then you put a brown liquor on top of that ice. Now here's the thing. Maybe you're like me and you're sitting there going, yeah, but I I joined last year. I became a donor last year. Well, thank you so much for all your support, for continuing to support us throughout the past year and, you know, the the coming year. And you think, but all these gifts, they sound great. How do I get on board with this? And it's easy. All you have to do is upgrade to a higher level. So I went and I decided to become a, a Justice Squad member this year so that I could cash in on all of these sweet presents. Yeah, we're so. not just we're not just podcasters. We're mm-hmm. We're donors too. That's we're donors. how. That's how we. That's how you know it's legit. We would never. I would never want to belong to a club that I'm not a member of, as Woody Allen once said in his hit film "Members Only." Uh, <laughs> you you will, however, even if you don't upgrade, you still have access to all that uh, exclusive donor content. But so you can't you. shove that donor content in your pussy and butt. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. That's and a- if you try, it's going to be super dry. Because you're using a dry jump drive. You need Max Fun Lube. MaximumFun.org forward slash donate. And make link. sure to tell them MBMBAM sent you. Yeah. And where are your favorites? Griffin, how about uh, you got a, got a Yahoo 
for us? I have a Yahoo? treasure. I have a treasure trove Delightful. of Yahoo answers. These are some particularly heady nugs, as it were. <laughs> heady choice nugs. I, I've stumbled onto the forbidden Yahoos. Um, <laughs> what do you and got? I'm, a, I'm afraid that these Yahoos may be above our adversary adversarial ad, advice ability pay grade. Uh oh. Um, that sounds like tr- that sounds like we've never had. Well. Okay, more accurately, we've had many questions that we don't know how to answer, but that's never stopped us before. Right, but it's a new year in April. 20 dirt. It's, it's a new us. It's, I, think, I think we need to realize our deficiencies, and I think we need to reach upwards okay. um, for a hand that we can grab that can pull us up. You know I, ha- I, mean? I, have, uh, I have someone on, on my speed dial that okay. I turn to, and maybe I can get him on the phone. Hold on one second. Let me try to call him. Okay. On the phone. This is fun. Bloop, bloop, blop, bloop, 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 bloop. <laughs> That's not the standard Skype noise. And you, you only dialed I, six. You only dialed six numbers. Bloop. Okay. That's seven. Okay. Bring. So is he local? No Shut area up. Code Shut up. Sorry. Bring, 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 bring. <laughs> bring, oh, bring. Sh- Shetty didn't answer. I guess. Hello. Oh. Hello. Excuse me. Hello. Hello. Oh. Is, hello. Oh. Hello. Hi. Who's this? Uh, this is Dan Savage. Oh my God, Dan Savage! How did you have Dan Savage's number? Uh, how did you? A better you question: Why didn't you know it would be Dan Savage when you called him? <laughs> why are you surprised by it? I, I um, did I you mean to call Fred Savage? And like, you hit the wrong <laughs> he's right next. I have all the savages in my book together. Mm-hmm. Fred Savage is who, is who I call when I need sex advice. So <laughs> <laughs> was one of I was, that advice. was my big question: is is who watches The Watchmen? Who gives the sex advice to the sex advisor? Fred Savage. Fred. Okay. Well, question answered. I and then when and when Fred and I are stumped, we go to Chris Savage of MythBusters for an answer. <laughs> that man has never had a sex. <laughs> Griffin, what's the uh? What? Thank you, first off, so much for joining us, Dan. Griffin has some, as he says, choice, choice. Sorry, Griffin, choice nugs. Uh, choice heady, the dankest herb. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, that Yahoo has to offer. Um, do we need do we need to introduce Dan or is he a man that requires no introduction? Hopefully, if you're listening to our dumb show, you know that Dan Savage uh, began the Inconspirator Project with his husband Terry. He has the sex advice column Savage Love, and also the Sex Advice Podcast. And yeah, rival rival sex advice podcast. Rival sex advice podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, not, not rivals. We we share the podcast network together. There's room enough in this world for okay. all four of us. So long as you three stay in one podcast. If you branch out into three podcasts, there's no room anymore for us, and we will go to war. <laughs> oh, those would be some lonely, lonely podcasts. <laughs> you got to stay in your straight podcast oh. ghetto, all three of you together. <laughs> right. uh, we, and, and only one of us knows actually knows what we're talking about. So that's... Yeah. Um, uh, that, that's, that's one more that's than knows what they're talking about on my podcast. So you got, one <laughs> on, got that on me. Griffin, I'm ready. Hit me with this first question. Um... Yeah, let's let's get into it. How about this one? Uh, it was sent in by Catherine Hoffman. Thank you, Catherine. It's by Yahoo Answers user Tony, who asks, How long can you wear edible underwear? <gasps> Plan to surprise the lady for Valentine's Day. Problem is, I need to work that day, and I will not have time to change before I see her. Is it okay to wear it for long periods of time? I work in construction. Oh, oh no. no. That's the worst thing you could have said at the end. <laughs> That is not yeah. a real question. <laughs> That's not a real question, you guys. You're getting faked out. No one has ever in the whole history of edible underwear ever worn edible underwear, which are fruit roll-ups in the shape of panties. <laughs> sure. Next, There's pass, no. pass. No, not, it didn't happen. <laughs> no. What happens to all the edible underwear then? Do you just get it, desperate, realize you have no fruit roll-ups in the house, and just go for it? Yeah, and you pack them into your kid's lunch. <laughs> send them off to school. <laughs> you can impress you his at friends. Least, do you at least cut them into fun shapes, or do you just like? <laughs> just yeah, only if let you're a go. helicopter parent would you bother with that. <laughs> let your kids cut. Like your kid can't your... tear it apart with his teeth like everybody else with fruit roll up underpants. These are some tough panties. <laughs> <laughs> you're tearing all the kids' creativity away too. Let the kid tear the panties into whatever shapes he wants to. Exactly. I, also, as somebody who has dived so deep into Yahoo Answers, who's I'm I'm perpetually stuck in Yahoo Answers limbo. I am not convinced that there isn't somebody out there who wears edible underwear for their comfort, 
for their just you for, know for but the relaxation. thing is the thing is the, 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 the missing part there though the leap you haven't made is there might be somebody out there wearing edible underwear but no one in the whole history of edible underwear has ever slept with that person or any other person who wears right. edible underwear oh, sure i see what so you're that, saying that that person wears edible underwear in theory that they right. might <laughs> one day in practice have sex with somebody but it's never going to happen sure. <laughs> but if there were such a fucking psychopath on there, they would be an active user in the Yahoo Answers service. No that question. is a hundred percent true. Griffin, how about another? How about another question? I want to help someone today. Okay. This is our okay. chance. Um, how about this? It was uh, sent in by Emily Wall. Thank you, Emily. It's by Yahoo Answers user Drop Dead Gorgeous who asks, "Well, IDK, how I would ask this, but um, how do you touch a girl's <laughs> boobs?" Hmm. You see, I've touched her boobs before, but IDK, if I did it right, and I got real nervous. Also, how do you do it while her shirt is still on? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dan, I should have warned you before we started. Uh, sometimes our show can get a little blue. <laughs> we, uh, so I, t I don't want to make you uncomfortable. Uh, things do get a tad racy. We talk about things that could be observed as being sin in the eyes of the Lord. Yeah. So, so just a heads up. Just a heads okay. up. Okay. Uh, how do you touch a Okay, If you know about this, I would love to hear it. Uh, how do you touch a girl's boobs? With permission. The, well, that's, <laughs> that's obviously <laughs> number one yeah. key um, thing. I would that. start with consent. Mm. Consent? <laughs> uh, key, have, absolutely. Have you tried being super attractive and charming and like saying mm -hmm. dope shit to women? That does seem like people who are on, on, on all sides of the court People who are very attractive and say the right things all the time, they yeah. seem to, to touch I, the most privates. I've also found that women really like it when you pretend to be a DJ on their boobs. <laughs> no, I don't think that's accurate. <laughs> right. I, 100% of the time, every I, time. I'm going to I'm gonna have to defer to you guys on this. You're, you're three straight guys, right? <laughs> I've only ever uh, touched yeah. a girl's boobs under duress in my teen years when I was trying to prove I was straight. And I'm sure I, I was bad at it. <laughs> or yeah. a, cr a crowded subway car, perhaps? I mean... <laughs> No, girlfriend. Uh, I had girlfriends. I yeah. said dope shit, and I got a girlfriend. <laughs> and I had to do dick shit that I didn't want to do with her, and it was a disaster. Mm -hmm. yeah. Apparently, that pretending your girlfriend is Andy Gibbs is not a form of birth control. <laughs> we'll just leave it there. I mean, there's a lot of methods you can... I'll tell you this. Don't go to Yahoo Answers to ask this. Mm -mm. Because one the the top answer is who cares? Just grab it. That's not oh, it. That's a hundred percent the wrong no, one. No, that's Obvi not right. Even with consent, just like blindly, just like just latching two, on like an alien baby. Just going with <laughs> going with the double crab claw is like, a fucking like a drunk guy looking for the light switch. Just stop it. <laughs> Have you guys all had sex with more than one woman each? Simul At the same time? No. No, not simultaneously, sure. like in, in no. sequence. I'm just, I would assume that women, different women enjoy having their boobs touched differently. You know, some guys like to have yeah. their balls slapped, and some guys just like to have them cupped. <laughs> right. Is it not yeah. the same? I like having one ball slapped and the other one cupped at the same time. <laughs> That's a big trick. That's a good mm -hmm. trick you can do. I like it to be like that um, that desktop thing where you swing one and then they kind of clack against each other and yeah, swing sure. back and forth. Yeah, oh, I forgot to mention this is, I mean, obviously Justin and Travis know this because they're my brothers, but Dan, I have super loose balls. They, uh, wow. they are crazy, crazy, crazy loose. It's. Well, you should do your kegels. <laughs> and you can actually get, there's a surgery where they take in your scrotum. There's not a lot of nerve endings in the scrotum, so you can safely have that, that adjusted Just tuck for it. you. Yeah. Well, I'll see about that. See, you are goddamn. You're good at this. Yeah, you know things. I, I, I know, learn yeah, something. I know things. Inside, we should learn at least a few things before we start doing this again, guys, because we really don't know any, know anything. I think you got to start tender, and then you can ramp up from there if you, if, if need be. If the feedback, you, it's all about active feedback, isn't it? It's all about doing some shit. Start with the most harmless shit you can. And then just ramp mm -hmm. it up. Ramp it up. Hey, can I and tell you a funny you story about my uncle, another one of those straight guys in the world like you three? Sure. Yeah. It's, a, it's about balls, so it's kind of relevant. He was a okay. rock star okay. in California in the 70s of this big regional band, and he used to get a lot of blowjobs from, what are those things called, groupies? And mm -hmm. because it was the 70s, he slept with a lot of virgin groupies, and that was fine with him. And he likes a lot of pain during a blowjob. He likes to have his balls punched and slapped and his dick bitten. Hey, Uncle right. Jimmy, uh -huh. if you're listening, how you doing? <laughs> and Welcome to the show, Uncle Jimmy. And so what he would always say uh, to these girls when, they would, when he would instruct them on how exactly he liked his junk just mauled is he would pat them on the head and say, 
this is how all guys like it. So oh, no. it's, Uncle so, Jimmy! So that when they then slept with the next rock star... <laughs> That's the that oh, poor guy. That's a great move. Got his junk just fucking beat down. And that would oh, be Michael you, Jimmy. Late at night, he'd think, oh, that girl I slept with uh, last month is now sucking Mick Jagger off. Wonder how that's going. <laughs> <laughs> Not good. You're creating, you're creating psychological time bombs inside of these women's <laughs> exactly. sex. That's actually what Painted Black was written about. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, man, poor, can you imagine, like, thinking, like, oh, you must be one of Jimmy's girls. I can't believe <laughs> you, you've been <laughs> poisoned the well been, for everybody. You carry his brand of, of, of <laughs> ball trauma. Um, that might have taken care of your loose balls. Couldn't, she could have taken a <laughs> chunk out of them, and you could have stitched it right up. Right. Yep, there you up. go. Sure. That, that would have been a lopsided bit. Surgeons, you can keep a secret. Trap Griffin, yeah. I needed one more question. I know you have one more. Um, I have a few. Uh-oh. This one, this one, okay. This one was sent in by Valerie Rogers. Thanks, Valerie. It's by Yahoo Answers user D341255, which... <laughs> I imagine mm. it's not their Christian name, uh, who asks, should mixed gender swim classes be allowed? At my daughter's schools from 6th to 10th grade in PE, she attends the swim unit, and boys and girls have it together? Why is this allowed? Shouldn't this make the girls feel uncomfortable and give boys an opportunity to harass and humiliate girls and cause distractions and goofing off among everybody? Not to mention young boys will be around with no shirt, which I think is inappropriate for girls to be around of. Woof. Wow. See, As this- do I, sort of. I don't think I don't think there should be mixed gender relationships at all in pools and sure. <laughs> right. honeymoon suites. <laughs> anyway, in no situation, those mixed gender relationships Which, they never work out. Right. Well, I mean, I guess in in defense of whatever principal or gym teacher has put together this particular program, uh, six to tenth grade is like there's a bubble there in a young man's life where he is incredibly sexually mature. Um, Mm -hmm. and he knows how to really handle himself around, you know, (laughs) temptation and his female peers. And that bubble lasts from ages, you know, 10 to 10 to 15. So this, this, I mean, I don't see any problem with it. I I would also say that the the young men uh, do not need any extra help to sexualize women at that point. So I think whether they're in, you know, bathing suits or like full on parkas. Or encased in Iron Maidens, (laughs) it doesn't matter. And if the water in the pool is growing increasingly opaque over the course of the swim class, you have a problem. <laughs> if, there's, if, there's, if there's a half inch of spume on top of this, of foamy spume, there's an we, issue. We brought out a UV light and the place burned down. So that, it was a pretty... It was a bad scene. Uh, I am stealing that. <laughs> that fucking graduating class is not going to be able to look at each other on the on the fucking podium and getting their diplomas. No we way, no how. Not, you you know, you know, not that there isn't sexual tension, I must say, in a single gender swim class that I had to do in freshman year at Quigley <laughs> Preparatory Seminary North, a high school Catholic school for boys thinking about becoming priests, where I shit you not. Is that the whole title of the school? That's a Quigley really Preparatory title. Seminary North. Uh, where I shit you not, swim class was in the nude. We wonder where these problems <gasps> in the Catholic the Church fuck? came from. What? Did yep. this swim class happen next to the vomitorium because it <laughs> took place in ancient Rome? Basically. And there were two what? priests on staff full time. They were called disciplinarians. They sat in an office all day having teenage boys sent to them to get spanked. I was going to be a priest until they eliminated those positions. And then I thought, you know what? I can I wear dresses say, and live in a big a- house and fuck boys without the whole ordination business. <laughs> waiting list a mile long. Bro. Oh, my God. Yeah. That position is like right below the Pope in terms I mean, of desirability. I'd love to. I don't have the grades. I just I don't have the grades. I don't have the community service. I'll never get the job. There's a whole, a whole line of dudes That's waiting right. to get that gig. Although, you know, I think about it. If your entire high school class had all been through this this fucking obstacle course of sexuality maybe it would like get a bunch of shit out of the way and then you could like focus on school and stuff maybe this would be like the most enlightened high school class ever because they don't have to think about those things right the, uh, the, let me check my schedule real quick I got uh, math first period and then I got English and then I got boners and uh-huh. <laughs> I had boners all day every day for an entire semester so like I don't I can't get boners anymore no I think I'm desensitized school... to boners forever right Sixth grade, though, boy, like girls are, 
you know, more developed than boys, they develop faster than boys. Wouldn't that be, you know, you people worry about the girls being harassed or slut shamed or made to feel uncomfortable. Wouldn't the boys be the ones who feel uncomfortable in sixth grade because the girls are a foot taller right? than they are and mm -hmm. dating guys in college and there they are like <laughs> still like hairless little monkeys with no hair on their nuts? I Wouldn't am. it be mortifying for the boys? Listen, Dan, if I put off interacting with the girls until I'm sexually developed, <laughs> uh, I don't think I would have had... Like, I wouldn't have met a woman until my late twenties. So yeah, you wouldn't be married right now. Wouldn't. I wouldn't be married right now. Yeah, I, I I don't think there's any age at which I wore I wore sweatpants all through my freshman year of high school because I didn't want to change for gym. Like, and that was I was fourteen Whoa. or fifteen at that point. Like, yeah, not because I was afraid of changing for gym, but I did at one point have to have uh, someone had to sit me down and talk to me about wearing dress shirts and tearaway pants as a look. <laughs> So I don't think there was ever a worry about me interacting Can I with tell you something? Man. Can I tell you something that will make you want to get in a time machine and go blow your brains out when you're 15? When I was 15, <laughs> I had a girlfriend who was my older brother's ex-girlfriend, and I lost my virginity in a three-way. Damn! A so I, w I was doing well with the ladies at 15 because I didn't give a shit. I was like, oh, all right, I guess. Just think about how many more three ways you could have been in, though, if you were in tearaway pants. Because then there's no, you don't have to. At any no, opportunity, what are there's we? There's no fumbling. <laughs> yeah. That fucking pool, Travis well, you would know, have evacuated. At 15, I'd also mastered button and zipper technology, and I could actually get my pants off when that, yeah. when the moment. Well, some of us were not all that advanced, listeners. Dan. Yeah, Travis doesn't have pre. Oh, Mr. Braggy fingers. McGee coming over from his podcast and Sorry. dance zippers. Dan's so I'm great at taking saying. his pants off. Off and on, just off and saying on, you would have you would have gotten more pussy when you were fifteen if you were gay. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Advice for everyone. <sighs> Dan, uh, before we let you go, is there anything we can help you with? I you know find I do. That I do have a question. But okay, yeah, I had girlfriends when I was fifteen. I had sex with girls. Uh, I, I never perform cunnilingus, and if there's, you know, say I get arrested, I get thrown in prison, and the men's prisons are full, and I'm sent to a women's <laughs> prison, and there's uh -huh. some, like, bizarre set of circumstances under which I am required to perform cunnilingus, how do yeah, you do that? Yeah. Okay. Ugh. I like oh. to play like I'm a DJ. <laughs> no, no, the <laughs> DJ is not, we're not doing that again. We're not going to the DJ. Have, let me ask you something. Did you, uh, uh, Dan, did you listen to, did you listen to the radio at all in the 90s? I did. There was a man named. There was. A, I asked because there was a man named John Popper, uh, <laughs> who was the front man for a band called Blues Traveler, and he, the way that he does his thing on a harmonica is basically like that, except uh, except it's like sideways. It's horrible. so. Are you telling me? Are you are you advising our friend Dan that should he be in this alternate <laughs> universe, which frankly sounds a lot like a, a lot of the slash fiction I've read over the year? <laughs> the women, the man's prison was all full. I was the only dude in. Uh, I, you're saying he should blo blow I'm saying into the, the vagina like John Popper. Close, <laughs> close your eyes. Close your eyes. Okay. And imagine the bridge from Hook. <laughs> it, the Blues Traveler song Hook. Uh, I will try. I will try my best. You could also close your eyes and imagine the final battle from the movie Hook and just do mm -hmm. that as well. Peter yeah. Pan versus Dustin Hoffman as Captain Hook. Now, let me tell you Scaring this. Off. Women hate it when you shout bangerang into their vaginas. <laughs> that, that is, that is, as long as you don't do that, really, you should be fine. You should be fine. Every anything okay. else goes. Uh, I'll, know. I will do what I can. Also, start gentle, ramp up. Maybe they do. Th want this you is to better shout advice. Bangerang. This is better advice than a bisexual friend of mine gave, who said, "Just pretend you're trying to extract a bullet from a wound." Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> Pretend that your lady's vagina has just been bitten by a cobra. <laughs> Suck that venom out. Get that venom out. She's got to live, no, damn said, it. Pretend the clit is a bullet and you are, without using your teeth, trying to remove it from this gunshot wound um, that is that, her business. That, that parenthetical in there is so vital. Yeah. It's so important. <laughs> yeah, don't Do not actually teeth. try to remove it. It's in there for a reason. Unless. 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 You know, everybody likes something different. That's mm -hmm. true. You just got to ask her. You're a friend of Jimmy's. Yeah, she, like, I was going to say she up. could be the she could be my aunt Jimmy. <laughs> um, I mean, while well, we have the opportunity, uh, do we Dan, have any I have advice? a question for you. The uh, the three of us were raised uh, Southern Baptist. Um, oh God, and, I'm and sorry. Our, I know our yeah. parents are wonderful people, and 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 they taught us a lot of good stuff. But in terms of um, becoming i guess what's the what's the word i'm looking more modern in our uh, approach to sexuality we kind of all had to learn 
the hard way in getting rid of a lot of the te- teachings, lessons that we learn, like from especially from that religious background. The like, Beatitudes. The Beatitudes, <laughs> for example. Like, is there a better path? To getting out, like to to unlearning those lessons, rather than just looking like a dumbass enough until it gets through. Well, I think when it comes to men raised in the Southern Baptist tradition, the quickest way to help them unlearn a lot of the sex phobia and hangups and slut shaming and double standards is to bend them over the sofa and fuck them in the ass really hard <laughs> with a strap-on dildo. <laughs> is and not there a lot an of option B? <laughs> Hey, listen. I'm not ruling anything out. I'm willing to change. I'm doing. I'm going to change. I'm going to do whatever it takes. You know, option B is just get out there in the world and live your life, and you'll encounter all sorts of different people who disprove a lot of the bullshit that you're taught in in your faith tradition. Now, I was raised Catholic. I was taught a lot of bullshit too. Um, and you get out there in the world, and you realize that it's not uh, as simple or as uh, cut and dried or black and white or Jesus likes this and Jesus doesn't like that as your parents and your preachers sure. and teachers led you to believe. It's a quick I think unlearning Justin's- process. I think Justin's hoping for a uh, sort of a safe environment where you can do this and maybe get it over with in a week. Maybe like San some Francisco. sort of maybe like some sort of camp experience. Where it's San just like, Francisco, there should be like camps for straight guys in San Francisco, <laughs> right. where you just get dropped off in a speedo at the corner of Market and Castro on a Friday <laughs> night, and you have to fight your way back <laughs> to your hotel in <laughs> San Diego in, without any help from honey. anybody. Just go nuts. A straight survivor will pass, call it. and you just have to. <laughs> That's right. It's Make like the new, new Hunger Games. I would watch that. You will have your yeah. eyes and your thighs opened for you. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Savage, thank you so, so, so much for joining us. It was a genuine treat. You're the second guest we've ever had after our dad. and, um, and The only one who didn't ejaculate all three of you into the world. I feel awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, yeah the, the only one. You're but our first me, non-ejaculate let me, guest. Let me posit this. <laughs> didn't you? Ooh, <laughs> Twist. <laughs> Whoa. So, Dan, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. My pleasure. Thank you so much to uh, to Dan Savage for joining us. That uh, was such a treat. And, you know, he only does that because we're members of the Maximum Fun Network. Oh, if, no, not, I, if, not, if, he, if we weren't, he wouldn't have the time. He's a big deal. Yeah, that's he true. He wouldn't have the time of day for us. If you don't believe us, try getting him on the horn and getting him on your fucking podcast. You can't mm-hmm. do it if you don't carry that cachet. He is a very, very brand aware person is all <laughs> Dan Savage cares about one thing labels uh-huh. <laughs> super super duper appreciate Dan joining us that was that was a, a, a real thrill for us um, and this is the kind of stuff that happens on the Maximum Fund Network and you could be supporting it right now by going to MaximumFund.org forward slash donate and just donating a few bucks a month kick us a few bucks 10 bucks for those uh, that earbud and uh, bonus content or 20 bucks for lots of things for your vagina and your butt and uh, thirty-five to get drunk enough to try using butt lube, you know. You, and and, and, and here's the thing: in in all of this, as with our podcast, you are our best marketing tool. So you know, if you are already a donor, if you already support, great. Thank you so much. Now go tell all your friends on Facebook and Twitter. Say, hey, I'm a donor. Why aren't you? You, I know you listen to this, Jimmy. We've listened to it together, and now you're pirating it because you have the chance to support this network, and you're not. There are only two kinds of maximum fun listeners. Donors and thieves. Which one? I, you go, I was going to go with donors or boners. <laughs> donors or boners. 2013. Which one do you want to be? Only two kinds of listeners come out of my come out of my brother, my brother and me. Donors and boners. Which one are you, son? What's that voice you're doing? I, it was supposed to be like an army drill sergeant. Um, okay. But yes. I, I, I don't know what it was exactly. Yes. Also stoners. Donors and boners and stoners. Who meant to donate but forgot. (laughs) Oh, shit. I missed that two weeks. When's that pledge drive, dude? (laughs) It's July. You missed it completely. (laughs) You've been asleep for four months. Uh, Are you talking about stoners or Rip Van Winkle? (laughs) (laughs) Just stoners and boners and donors and Rip Van Winkles. And gypsies and tramps and thieves. (laughs) So on on top of the three levels that we've, we've described at length, there are other higher levels if you're a high roller uh, and you want the dopest that our, our network has to offer gift-wise. There's If you want to drop a hundo per month, there you can be a member of Jesse's Golden Eagles uh, where you are initiated into the Inner Circle, which is a club that discusses comedy, music, art, and culture. 
And basically what that means is is the hosts of, of Max Fun programs, we will curate our favorite work each month and we will share it with you. This the inner circle member. The, it's basically like comedy Illuminati, which mm-hmm. almost rhymes. Uh, you also get the rocks glasses and the the vibrator and the earbuds and the lube and the digital content. Uh, but you also get to be a member of a secret society. If you want to go even higher, there's a $200 per month Jordan's Platinum Angels, which gets you all that shit and free registration for fucking BoatParty.biz for the Atlantic Whoa. Ocean Comedy and Music Festival. It's a cruise that goes to the Bahamas with everyone who's ever been funny. You could trip to the Bahamas for listening to podcasts. Think you about c- it. Listen, you can fucking hang out with Maria Bamford and John Hodgman and Josie Long and Mark Marin and Eugene Merman and go to the fucking Bahamas. Anyway, I got anyway. heated there for a second because it made me angry that I wasn't going to do that. But fuck. <laughs> but you could. But you could because it sounds you could do something so cool that I'm not allowed to do it. That is how cool this thing is. That is it is very cool. So um, please go to MaximumFun.org forward slash donate. Give support our show. Uh, it really does mean the wor- world to us. We're trying to get a thousand new donors this year. We've done it, I think, two years in a row. We've swung mm-hmm. it. Uh, also, for every new donor, you can. Uh, we have challenge donors who donate, like you know, a quarter or whatever, based on how many new donors we get. So, and it's around six bucks a month for every new donor. So it's huge. It's that's enormous because that adds up. If we get a thousand new donors, that's an extra six thousand bucks a month going to the. Network, uh, so everybody who tweets a link to our donate page with the hashtag Max Fun Drive. You get entered into a giveaway to win a trip to Los Angeles and a tour of Max Fun headquarters. The best tweet wins. So that's awesome. Yeah, it's huge. It's awesome. Uh, so so we're can doing I a lot win of shit because no. I've been tweeting a lot. Absolutely not. We're doing a lot of shit this year. I I, yeah. I know it's weird to because we we you know we do this annually. We don't do it every week. I know it's weird to hear us asking for for money, but like seriously, it it means the world that the people out there who who donate donate like to support us doing this fucking thing that we do mm-hmm. every week. I mean, I don't want to make it sound like we just fucking fart and a podcast comes out. Like, you know, it takes it takes it takes work, but it's still at the end of the day fucking goofing off with my my bros. So, um like seriously, think about supporting um if you listen and um I I just thank you. I thank, thank you, you so from much. my heart. Questions. I got them. That's a new bed I've been working on. Okay. Like a Is liner? it the bed that you do whenever you how, Questions. Okay. I got them. I like Answers. It. You want them. It's my brother, my brother, and me. It's a show. It's a podcast. It's a pyramid scheme. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell anybody. <laughs> I, I shouldn't have put that in the jingle. And then the podcast made off with my money. <laughs> yeah. Thank yep. you. I've been working on that one for a couple of years I now. I said that podcast priest, everything I had. My boyfriend of five months recently asked if I would help him deep clean his apartment. He seemed hurt by my immediate response of, clean your own damn place, dude. To be fair, he did not ask me to clean for him. He just asked if I would be willing to help out as a favor. I have to admit, his place is gross, and I would love it if it was less so, but I can't help feeling weird about scrubbing my boyfriend's toilet. Is my response unreasonable? Should I be down with the idea of helping him clean his place? That's from Perplexed in Portland. How about just don't scrub his toilet? How, How about, about you just clean his hand- stove? He handles toilet duty. I would never, ever, ever want someone else to clean my, my ever. house. Ever. Where did you put reason. everything I need? I don't know. I put Aww. it in a cabinet somewhere. Not just that, but like I hope you enjoyed touching my fecal particles. Because it's not just, guess what, doesn't just live in the toilet. There's more of his fetal particles on his stove than in his toilet, which is horrifying. You need to ask him what he's been doing there. To Why is he pooping on. on his stove? It's a great question, Travis. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Travis, for asking the big question. The big, hard question. We're not afraid to ask the big questions here. Why we're are you pooping on your stove, we're Dylan? Just afraid to answer them or look at them. I... I, you gotta say no. This sucks. It sucks that he put you in this position. Now, hold on. Don't you think it could be like breaking two, electric boogaloo, kind of like a montage cleaning, oh, I getting feel to you. know you, happy fun times? Get those get those cobwebs off the ceiling fan by dancing upwards onto the ceiling. There's a scene I'm just saying that the, all, in every movie where you see people like cleaning up a new space they found, everybody mm-hmm. seems so happy and they're growing closer yeah. as, as friends. Fuck me yeah. on these old pizza boxes. <laughs> At the now end of the montage. Up. 
<laughs> we've been we've been cleaning so so long for so hard. We're real sweaty. Fuck me on these pizza boxes. Do that thing where you paint on his nose. Mm-hmm. You know, uh-huh. with the roller. You're like, ah, oh, you got me. Mm-hmm. You know what? Oh, and and camera tricks make it look like you're painting over the camera. Oh, mm-hmm. I love that. I love mm-hmm. that move. You know what? I would. I would be so mad if somebody painted on my nose. I don't care oh how well we are. Do you know how hard it is to get this shit off? I know it's latex and it'll like peel off, but still, you maybe look like a fucking moron. It happens in Benjamin Button, and they uh, it's him and Kate Blanchett. Kate Blanchett, the love interest in Benjamin Button, and he paints on her nose, and I thought, you man, what an asshole. That's yeah, your dude. day. That's your that's whole your whole day. fucking day. You know when like somebody pinches your nose and it hurts like shit. Like, it hurts when you apply any amount of pressure to your nose whatsoever. You gotta scrub that shit to get it off. You gotta use Ugh. lye. Ugh. Ugh. He should not have asked. It was incorrect. It was a mis- miscalculation yeah. to ask. Because, like, no. Five months? Yeah, okay, no. here's the thing. I agree, because it's one thing if you, like, you volunteer, like, hey, hey, we should maybe pick this place up. I'm happy to help. It's another thing to be like, oh, man, my place is a dump. My you turlet needs grouting. Grout my turlet! <laughs> Now it does be- okay, but on the flip side of this, if you spend any sort of time there, it, a considerable amount of time, then you know if you guys are like splitting living places, I think it's a fair request to ask, you know, I to ask so- you to pitch in. Why is this fucking place so dirty? Why doesn't he yeah. fucking clean it himself? It's one thing to be like, hey, we made dinner together. Let's do the dishes together. It's another to be like, man, I've been living in squalor for like six months. Well, he could find help a way me, to work around. Help he me could... throw out everything that I've been hoarding. I know you you've know? I know you've used this turlet as well during your the, your five months where you've been over here. <laughs> um, so would it really kill you to to get us help us both out? You're really doing us both a favor by scrubbing. Well, my is turlet he gonna help you house. clean up your apartment? Oh, she doesn't. She doesn't need that. Okay, so then I think that she doesn't need to help him. Yeah, she doesn't need to help him. Tell him, tell his messy ass that you're not coming over anymore until he cleans up. Period. Mm, yeah. Again. Just say no scrubs. No scrubs until you scrubs. <laughs> Stupid. Tell tell him to creep to the hardware store. Where do they sell cleaning supplies? Uh, tell Walgreens. him. Tell tell him to. Make a waterfall of uh-huh. scrubbing bubbles. Uh-huh. And it too is, I don't know what even the cleaning supplies are called. I'm a clean. You do clean. Have you cleaned stuff before? I'm just. I don't produce any waste. It's that I've like I've managed to streamline. <laughs> I've managed to streamline my life so much that I don't produce any waste in any like any format. No no oils. My body doesn't produce any natural oils. No sweats. No. I mean, I don't. I haven't evacuated in like 15 years, is what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm so sick. <laughs> Listen, this this whole podcast is just a cry for help, you guys. I, it's, belly's it's, the size of a sumo beer well, bag. It's not a cry for help, Travis, because I can't cry. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> I managed to come out. I I keep it inside. I managed to exude all of my body's natural toxins through a vapor. We should uh, be. We should be. Uh, uh, introducing ourselves as your oldest, your middlest, and your lumpiest. <laughs> your most unsettlingly your most, lumpiest. Your most jaundiced. Well, the lumps are just my toxin sacks, which is where I exude. <laughs> no problem. It's natural. No and that's not, how Griffin became a Batman villain. Do not touch them. Oh, my God. I know, oh, that, I, know I produce a natural <laughs> rattling noise that makes you, that sparks the cure, that piques the curiosity. <laughs> he uh, often lures in small children that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got a question for you guys. I'm going to be caught in between two jobs in a month or so. I plan on relocating to a different state at the end of the summer where my girlfriend is starting grad school and will be continuing my civil engineering career there. However, at my current company, people are resigning left and right, indicating a sinking ship. I have a suspicion that I'll have the summer free. My question is this. What can I do for three months that can still put food on the table but has only a short-term commitment? I'm an outdoorsy numbers nerd, an amateur tinkerer. That's from Future Carney in Chicago. Okay, you want to know a secret? Hit me. Anything. Yeah. Let me yeah. hold on. Let me go ahead and type your uh, type your your metrics here into the job assistant that places you. So outdoorsy numbers nerd, amateur tinkerer. Uh, subway. Just go work at Subway. <laughs> Not on the Subway. At a Subway. 
Subway you can, sandwich. You shop. too can be a sandwich artist. Mm-hmm. Or here's the important thing: no matter what interview you go into, you just want to keep that three month time limit right in your oh, pocket. Do uh, not pull that move. I out. see a big future for myself here at <laughs> here at the Walgreens. I got some big ideas about how you guys can change up the way that you sell oh. your off brand <laughs> yeah. chips. Where do you see yourself in five years? Whoa, 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 whoa! Let's scale that back. Where do I see myself in ten? Here? Did you guess here? Because the answer is here. At Walgreens, I love it. I'm never going anywhere. I don't have kids, but when I do, they're going to work at Walgreens. This Walgreens. I want it to be a family business. <laughs> the important thing is that uh, one, one, one ploy you can take is found a, a softball league, an intro mm-hmm. Walgreens softball league. Mo- literally weeks before you are to resign, they will never. Because then you can really quit th- saying like, "I don't." I mean, I can't leave you guys right now. It's too. We got inventory coming up. There's the the division playoffs against CVS. Like I don't know, I don't know how we can how I can leave now. Ooh, or maybe like drum like organize everyone into like a Walgreens union, mm. and then just before the strike, you quit. <laughs> <laughs> you did. What I'm the that? sacrifice that this Walgreens demands. I'm so, I'm sorry. You'll have to go on without me. I have to go into hiding like Batman Rem- at the end of Dark Knight. Remember the lessons <laughs> I've taught you. That I am the I am not the cashier that this Walgreens deserves, but I'm the one it no longer has. Bye. 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 I actually I worked at a I worked at a Jimmy John's in Norman, mm-hmm. Oklahoma, knowing that you know the ter- the school year is about to end and I was about to go home. Mm-hmm. And it, it provides a lot of psychological freedom because, like, if your boss yells at you for doing something wrong or, like, they work you a terrible shift or something, it's like, yeah, but in your head, you know that fuck that place. I don't want to put you on blast, Travis, but weren't you fired from that Jimmy John's? No, they actually wanted to make me an assistant manager, and oh, I left. Man. I have been fired from a lot of places, Griffin. Yeah. So <laughs> I understand why that is a safe assumption. I got it matched But this up. Jimmy John's. Do anything you want to. This is yeah. a great time for you. Do write uh, do a job for three months that you can write a book about. I think that there's too many ex subway employees. Maybe that book's being pitched all over, like Memories of a Subway char- a Subway Artist, mm-hmm. and just people are like, no, we already have twenty of those manuscripts. <laughs> a lot of those in the hopper. A lot of those are cooking up in pre pre and post. Now, if you could write a subway based movie, mm-hmm. now we're talking. Now yeah. we get. Now you're cooking the ass. There already is a oh. fucking subway TV show. I see ads on it for Hulu all the time. You know about what? this? What? Sorry? It's called. I think it's called the Nine to Fivers. It's a Hulu only TV show, as all the best television programming is. <laughs> Good job. And it's about people who work at Subway, and it's not like fun way. It's not like an offshoot. It's fucking legit to quit subway it seems sponsored like, by subway that seems like a pretty good show i'd probably watch that show it's pretty good it's all about you know love life making sandwiches of course <laughs> there's a uh, there's a lot of commercials for hulu based programs mm-hmm. that don't that i don't know that look pretty good i saw a lot of commercials from where i'm been been watching real shows watching real shows watching real like, hey, shows? fake shows on here yeah do you know how they pay for all those fake shows how because they have a fucking show that's all about Subway. <laughs> they have Subway programming. Anyway, makes me so angry. I have a Yahoo answer, if you guys don't mind the leap. Uh, maybe this will calm, calm my nerves. Uh, it's sent in by Emily Wall. Thank you. It's by Yahoo Answers user Layla Bell, who asks, I'm a cat person, and so is my friend. We understand each other's meows and other sounds. <gasps> Wait, hold on. When in the dark, we are cat. Wait a minute. Holy shit. Wait. I actually, this is so weird because when you said the phrase, I am a cat person, my first thought was, I've been doing this show too long because I know what this person means is they're a person who likes to own cats. But I, I hear, like, I'm a half cat, half I person. I tried to. When in fact. I tried to vocalize the hyphen in between cat and person. I am a cat person. Uh, when in the dark, we are cat. But in the light, we are human. My friend has sharp, cat like teeth but I'm less obvious. We don't change shape, but we lose complete control and go cat. Uh, <laughs> Please. If anyone has info on this or has the same experience, fill us in. How okay, so they someone... want help. How do we fix it? We can't help it. Oh my God. I don't want to fix it. I want to hang. I, wanna I just want to hang. Yeah. 
can we get one hang going, please? Just one. But here's the thing, Justin. Think about the reality of that situation, because let's be honest. Lights, you know, the lights go dim, and you're just watching a fucking real person. Well, you're not watching. Oh, now I'm a cat. Travis, if you can see them, if there's if there's enough light to see them, hold on. They're human beings. So even if you were doing like night vision goggles, see, that's the only way. That's the only way you can observe these fools in their natural environment. Cruel fate to to be in a room. It's like Lady Hawk, you know? Like, you, uh-huh. you're in a room with a cat person, but you can't... You can only see them as person because they can't really, like, go ham with the lights on. You need night vision goggles. You like gotta have MVGs. That is Unless it's like a Kel Mitchell in... in uh, oh, fuck me. In real life? <laughs> Kel Mitchell is only Kel Mitchell when he's being naturally observed. <laughs> Otherwise, he is Keenan Thompson. Otherwise... Oh, no. <laughs> I don't think that's it. <laughs> Although I've never seen them in the same room at the same time. <laughs> That's why the show is called Keenan slash Kel. Keenan or Kel. Do you watch Keenan or Kel? <laughs> Keenan by way of Kel? <laughs> Keenan stroke Kel. Oh, man. This situation. Oh, man. Oh, man. I, I just want to know what it's like to be in a room with two people that you think are otherwise people people. Person persons. Not cat then, persons, just person persons. And then the lights go off and you're and then, like, Oh, there's a power surge. Why does this sound like you're pooping in a box? Where's my milk? Where's my milk? Where did it go? It sounds like it's being lapped. But that's weird. I don't have a cat. I only have two people peoples. <laughs> this is a strange situation I'm in. I think I'd like to leave. You can't leave. I think I'd like to leave this room. Where's the door? You I can't, can't find the door. So the door, the door, because the lights are off. I hear here's it. the terrifying thing. They can see you because as cats, they have superb dark vision. Mm-hmm. They got so cat, they're hunting you now. They cat eyes. You're the prey. You're they're the, the predator. Prey. They're the predator. I can't. It's like if Griffin, those, what's that to your left? It's. I mean, it's bright in my room. My real cat oh, okay. is outside. Maybe he's a person when it's dark. <laughs> that would suck. That would suck if that happened. If there was like a, <laughs> if there was like a two second like window where like the power goes out and it comes back on and there's just like a fucking dude on my couch just like sup meow, he changes like just like that. I would be fucking freaked. I would move out. The house is yours now, Cecil. I'm done. You this one's are yours. welcome, Stephen King. Hope that you send <laughs> us a check when you make this into a book and a movie and a play mm-hmm. and another movie. If you're gonna fucking larp an anamorph. Which, if I had said that sentence 10 years ago to anybody, mm-hmm. I would be committed to an insane asylum pretty much right away. But if, mm-hmm. but now, thanks to Yahoo Answers, I, I can fucking crack that cipher. If I were to LARP an anamorph, why would you go with a fucking domesticated house cat and not a more exotic animal? Ooh, good call. A more erotic well, animal, even. Do they say house cat? Or do they just say cat? Big, it could be a big, beautiful jungle cat. He's got a point. And it's a uh, with sinewy, like like a like Ugh, a cougar with a sinewy muscles. I get it. Cougars are basically land dolphins. I understand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, listen. Slick, slick one of those bad boys up, and you. <laughs> <laughs> you listen. You slick. You slick a cheetah up. You got a dolphin, basically. It's basically what you're working with. Thank you all so much for listening to this uh, podcast. They can't hear us. They're too busy jerking off right now. <laughs> Stop jerking it for just a second while we give you this very important message about the Maximum Fun Drive. Uh, it is a two-week blowout of fun and laughs. Now, don't say blowout right after you ask them to stop jerking it. <laughs> okay, you're right. It's like talking about waterfall when your friend has to pee. Uh, it is a two-week festival of, uh-huh. of fun and laughs. Uh, we really hope that you'll go to MaximumFun.org slash donate and choose one of these donation levels. Um, for $10 a month, you can get those Maximum Fun earbuds uh that are that are really slick and the digital content for 20 bucks a big sex pack the intimate sensations from our friends at uh the earbuds are in there the digital content is not in there it's in the cloud but you know just go to maximumfund.org slash donate it has all the details all the prize by packs the, by the way to clarify on that 20 dollars a month pack you can instead of the sex stuff Get a maximum fun rocket tee if that is more your bag. Oh, so it's an option. It's a either or situation. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, uh, so you can do that. If if you if you donate, thank you a lot. Um, go to go to that page if you need to like migrate from you know a shitty credit card to you know PayPal or you can change your your donation options there. You can also upgrade your donations. If you don't donate, think about it. 
just if you're sitting at your computer and we've given you entertainment and you dip into all the other shows and we give you all this shit and and you want to support us that would be the dopest just go to maximumfun.org slash donate we won't belabor the point but um think just think about it just think about it that's all i ask you please just think about it and uh we want to say thank you again to Dan Savage. God, God Thank damn you it. for casting on the show from uh, Savage Love and Savage Love cast over at The Stranger. So make sure you check out his shit if you haven't already because we assume that you do. But he's incredible and he's an awesome dude. Thanks again, Dan. Thank you, Dan. And thanks to John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song. It's a departure off the album Putting the Days to Bed. Uh, you can you can find that on iTunes or Amazon, I'm sure. I'm sure you can. I'm sure of it. Just thank also, you. just thank you guys. Thank you like, for listening and and helping to keep the show running and all the shows on the Maximum Fun Network. It's just such an amazing, you know. I I know we say it a lot and we said it just about every week since we joined, but it's such an amazing, just site and organization and a thing to be a part of. So thank you guys so much for being a part of it with us. You guys want to find on Yahoo? Hit me. This final Yahoo is sent in by Timothy Aitken or Atkin. Thank you, Timothy. It's by Yahoo Answers user Donna Griffin who asks. You answer my question now. How can I get in touch with Ellen DeGeneres? Help! (laughs) (laughs) I'm Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother. May kiss your dad. Square on the lips. MaximumFun.org Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported.